Let's fast forward a bit from these early days to the growth stage when companies are looking at expanding outside of their core market for the first time. So it's a really interesting stage because you maybe have found product market fit in one market, but it's almost like you have to find it again when you test the waters in new markets. So you have a lot of experience in this area, having worked on bringing ed tech products to new regions. What should founders be aware of when they first start looking at expanding to new geographies? That's yeah, a really good question because we see there's actually countless examples of ed tech companies and, and companies more broadly too. We can always, what happens in ed tech really happens in other sectors as well too equally. But yeah, there's plenty of ed tech who've done really well in their home terrain, their home country, their home jurisdiction. And so that's something that we see often, but being able to bridge and do that same thing somewhere else is a whole nother level of difficulty, right? Your question is, so what's the magic? What's the magic that allows you to do that? GeoGebra reached every country in the world. It, it was able to reach the world as a company because it had zero barriers to how it thought about what we were building. And we understood implicitly the world is a really big place. It's actually also a really small place. And I actually think that from my own personal travels in ed tech, metaphorically and literally, I don't think actually people are all that different anywhere in the world people and families and communities and kids and schools and when just getting on with the day-to-day -day or whatever that day-to-day -day is like. But I think the values around education and learning are universal. There's you, you can't go anywhere in the world and you ask a parent, is education important to you and your kids? So to say, yes, yeah, full stop. doesn't matter who you speak to. So that's a given. And then you could go drill down further. Is, is the process of learning different? The process of education is slightly different different in different parts of the world, but not really. There's somehow we've had this universal spread of a way that we impart or enable people to go down learning journeys, which is a little unfortunate in many ways, because we could get into the, I know we're not talking about that today, we could get into the problems of like the, the current education system. That's a bigger problem to solve that I think EdTech is working towards. But ultimately, I actually don't think it's as hard to, to leap into new geographies as, as everyone is thinking. If you start with the principle that all of your potential user base and community or customers are all fundamentally motivated by the same thing, which is providing a learning journey that's going to make my kids more successful. Okay. So the parents are really the gatekeepers and the teachers are the gatekeepers of those products. If your product really does solve that problem, then the only problem you have to solve then is allowing your product to be seen as reflecting that particular community. What, what does that look like? Every user needs to see themselves, like every person who uses an EdTech product needs to see themselves in the product. So what does that mean? It means that when you land on the page you know, or you, you open the app, it, it can't feel like you're reading a bad translation of your, your own language or how you think about or operate in the world, wherever you happen to be sitting and living. It has to feel like home, like it has to feel like yours and it, it has to feel like it was built for you and wherever you happen to be in the mountains of Argentina or what have you. If you're there and it has to feel like this is, this was built for me. And I feel like this reflects me. Your user community just has to see themselves in, in the product. And this is, I, I know it sounds, it's glib of me to say that it's not a hard problem to solve, but I think if you start with that principle, then I think you can leave geographies pretty quickly. Another, uh, I should add to this, and I'll close on this one, is that it's one thing to represent or allow people to see themselves represented in the product and that you're, you're responding to their individual needs. But they also, there is also a need to have, to feel like in your home your territory or country or community where you are using this product, that company or that organization isn't too far away. So that you have to feel like they're close. I think the principle of feeling like both you, you can see yourself in the product, you feel like it's made for you in response to your needs, but also that it's not far, far away from you. Like it's close enough. And, and that's euphemism for feeling, let's go back to Argentina. We're sitting in Argentina in the mountains somewhere that you feel like you could call someone up and or speak to someone in your home region that will talk to you about the product and give you safe product support if it's something as simple as that, but feel like it, it's really part of your community. So that's really important. So it's almost like instead of needing to find product market fit again, when you enter a new geography, it's like finding product marketing fit or product messaging fit. How do you communicate your product 
in a way that's more culturally sensitive to this new geography rather than redesigning the actual product or learning experience itself. Yeah, I think that's, that's a great summary, actually. And I think that comes back to something you and I have talked about before, too, which is this idea of like product market fit, of course, super important, but we've mused about people market fit. And I, I think that's a really interesting concept uh, because what you've just captured there is like how people are both see themselves in the product and how the people who are building the product are representing themselves and are representing the, you know, the product and the company to new geographies. So people, you know, it always comes down to people in everything in life, as we well know, uh, great companies, great leadership, great relationships, all of these things that happen in the world. It's always about, about people interacting with other people.